Hi everyone, this is Viraj Kolak. I'm working as senior product manager in Amazon. During my past seven years of experience in product management, I worked on various tools. Um, I worked on CRM platforms. I worked in advertising space. Uh, also got a chance to work upon some uh, finance and ops uh, domain related products. Um, throughout this experience, what I realized is um, I learned a lot of things from my mentors. I learned from colleagues. And today I really wanted to take this opportunity to share uh, some of these learnings with you, uh, especially how would you build a product from zero to one, um, meaning building a product from scratch. Um, and at the end of the presentation, uh, we can have a question and answer. So it will be about a 20 to 25 minute presentation. Um, here we will uh, go through various things. Uh, let's look at the agenda. So we'll first talk about uh, what is a product uh, from zero to one and what does it mean to take it from one to 100. Uh, today we'll focus primarily on zero to one. Um, then we will talk about uh, what are the various steps when you want to build a product from zero to one. So it starts with first step, which is product ideation. Uh, this step is about uh, understanding your customer, uh, understanding their pain points, uh, and then coming up with uh, your uh, product uh, document and the MLP idea. Uh, second step is buying from stakeholders. So this is an important step. Uh, without buying, as you know, uh, your product will be only on the paper. So you want to get buying on the stakeholders and get resources. Uh, third step is about prioritization and trade-offs. Uh, this is very hotly debated topic. Um, the next one is uh, launching the product. So we'll discuss about uh, what are the things we really need to take care of while launching a product. Um, and then last step is about measuring the impact. So any product as a product manager that you would launch, uh, it's really important to measure uh, the impact of the product in terms of uh, incremental value for customers, incremental value for your business. Uh, without that, it's really tough to justify uh, any product success. So let's get to um, what is a zero to one product. So the one thing we are going to do uh, during this presentation is uh, we'll not only just go through the various steps that are required uh, or the framework that you will follow uh, to take a product from zero to one, but we're going to take an example. So I'm going to pick an example of building a customer engagement platform. Um, and we will walk through that particular example uh, whenever we go through each of these steps. So in the end, you will realize how we went from uh, taking customer uh, needs, pain points, and actually um, launching the product. So let's talk about uh, the zero to one product. So it's usually the product which, a product that currently meets the customer needs uh, that does not exist. So uh, it is possible that uh, in your company, your role, uh, you, your customer has some needs um, and maybe there are some off shelf products, uh, but they are not uh, fulfilling their desires uh, or the needs of the customers. Uh, so the goal of such product is really uh, to build MLP. Uh, so the PM's goal is building MLP meaning minimally lovable product. Uh, we call it lovable because uh, there are different ways you can do it. Some people call it MVP, minimally viable product. Uh, but the lovable just has a meaning saying, um, your product will be loved by customers. So you are raising the bar here, uh, instead of just building something which is uh, just enough. So the next piece is a, a product from one to hundred. So this is about a product which is already existing, um, maybe with small set of customers. Uh, and then really goal of the PM is taking uh, this product to the hundreds of customers by building various features. So today we'll focus on the first part, which is uh, building it from zero to one. So let's see and take an example. So it's really easy. And that's what I learned uh, when I discuss with my mentors, when you take an example and walk through it, uh, it's really to understand and try to apply that uh, theory framework into uh, the practice. So think about it that uh, you're a product manager, you're working for a company uh, which has the e-commerce site. Um, think about your uh, current 
customer relationship management or customer engagement platform crm platform um, it does not meet uh, meet the needs of all the customers uh, and so your goal is you want to really build uh, the customer engagement platform from ground up and yeah one more thing um, throughout this presentation we'll share some tips uh, the tips are really helpful uh, so the first tip is uh, zero to one product it's cool um, and it's very exciting and that's why people some people want to join startups uh, but remember that it can fail and it can go back to zero so the key is uh, fail fast iterate uh, but get the mlp right let's go to the next one all right so the step one is product ideation so in this step we really want to understand we want to understand who are our customers and who are the stakeholders um, you can have different set of customers and the stakeholders could be different from the customers for example uh, in case of our uh, customer engagement platform your customers could be the shoppers on the website uh, but your stakeholders could be more than that it could be your uh, tech team, your data ship, it could be the marketing managers um, and then some operations team who are all involved to make the platform run and execute. Um, then the next piece is about uh, understanding the persona and pain point. So here I'm really talking about the um, end customer. So the shoppers on the website, the consumers. So you really want to understand uh, what is their persona and what are their pain points. So Think about it in case of an e-commerce site, a customer's journey is they come to the site, uh, they do have some intent to either buy some product or they come with the purpose of um, discovering something. Uh, they come to the platform, they uh, like something or then they make a decision, put it in the cart uh, and they buy the item. Um, eventually there's a process where it will get shipped and customer would get the uh, physical delivery of that particular product. In case of physical one, otherwise it could be digital products like the music or uh, video. Uh, so if you think about this entire journey, uh, there are various ingress points where you can try to reach to customer uh, to engage with them. And that's what we're going to learn about. Uh, how do we understand uh, what are the needs of customer and what are their pain points? Are we engaging with them at the right time? Um, are we, for example, if we are engaging with them for sending some marketing offers, promotional offers, uh, are we sending them at the right time? Um, then are we also, our recommendation, for example, algorithms, uh, are they relevant for the customer? Um, so these are the things we need to think about. And if the if you try to do customer survey, um, and that's what a PM uh, should do at the start of a product, where when you try to do customer survey or you go to your website, you try to understand the feedback of customers, based upon that, you will realize, uh, maybe some customers will say, okay, I don't get, uh, my marketing offers or any promotional activities. Some customers might complain about, I get too many of them. Uh, so these are the really pain points you need to further deep dive into. So let's go through our example and we will understand better. The third piece is really, we want to come up with themes uh, or I would call it pillars of the product. So the way we can think about themes is, um, try to think at a higher level, a broader level. Uh, the themes is something which without which the product cannot stand on its own. So if we uh, go to our example, so we're talking about this customer engagement platform and uh, I had actually built different flavors of this uh, in different teams. Uh, the end customer could be different, so the needs are a little different. Um, so in this case, uh, let's say that we are the shoppers on the website who are the customers. Um, and we understood uh, in the previous, uh, the, in the lesson that for these customers, uh, we want to ensure that uh, we want to reach to them uh, on time with the right offers, the right content. We send the content at the right frequency, not too many of emails. Um, so in the second piece is about the marketing managers and the admin team. So these are kind of the stakeholders where uh, if you think about uh, for any customer engagement platform, uh, who creates the content? I mean, it could be the marketing managers or um, some could be generated by algorithms. So this content needs to be really fit to the platform and then it needs to be directed to the right, uh, targeted to the right set of customers. So if you think about the theme, uh, this is how I would split it. Uh, so who, who is like really your segment of customers, uh, the customer you want to reach out to. 
um, what is really talking about the content? What, what do you want to really send to the customers? Uh, it could be through email, SMS. When is about uh, the timing and frequency of the delivery. So the timing really matters. I mean, as most of you noticed, there are certain times of the day when you're really going to maybe open your apps or uh, check your emails and you're likely to respond. Um, the frequency of delivery is another factor which matters. Uh, you try to send too many emails to try to engage with your customers. Uh, they will probably just opt out and you want to avoid that. Um, how is about the communication channel? Uh, in today's world, like omni-channel world, we talk about, uh, we want to reach out to customers through various channels. It could be email, it could be SMS, or it could be push notifications. Um, and then when you talk about the last piece, which is so what, which is, uh, nothing but the metrics and the feedback loop. And this is the most crucial part because uh, without you building an instrumentation, you won't have uh, an ability to measure the impact on customers, whether the uh, click-through rate is good enough or whether the customers are opening emails, what is the open rate? You want to understand what is the tap-through rate for the push notifications. So this is what really covered in the so what aspect. So let's talk about the th yeah, tip uh, for this particular one, the pillars. So when you think about theme, it's like pillars. If you take one of the pillars, the product really can't stand its own. So in case of our example, if you take away, for example, the content or what your product cannot stand, or if you take away uh, the so what part, then your product really can't stand because you can't measure the success. So that is what is really about uh, the how do you look at product ideation and then from customer you understand the pain points then you move towards building your product themes let's go to the second one so second step is really about stakeholder buying so this is an interesting line i heard from my one of my bosses he taught me about when you write your product vision uh, write in a language where your grandma will understand and <laughs> trust me guys it, it's really helpful um, you want to have meetings where um, you go in with your document, uh, you present your thing big through your vision and people are aligned and you get out of the meeting, you work with uh, tech team, build it. That's a smooth version of any meeting that could go to. But this is what you want to aim for and that's why it's important to write uh, your product vision in a language where anyone can understand. Um, if, you, if you want to understand more, so uh, think about it this way. So if you're writing, a uh, product doc, uh, then uh, try to answer uh, various frequently asked questions that would come up in the meeting. Uh, it could be around whether it's technically feasible. It could be around uh, whether uh, we have any alternate solution that we explored, why we are uh, building it now. Uh, these are the questions you want to answer uh, in your document. You also want to tell what would be the customer experience uh, or the end state of the product in this particular document. Then the next piece is about uh, specifying the theme. So in the previous lesson, we talked about, uh, there are various themes. Uh, so we want to specify each theme and for each theme, we want to have respective features. Um, we'll, we'll understand it better when we go to the next step. So you really want to build a doc in a way where you have these five themes that we talked about. Then you have various features. So if I talk about say, for example, uh, the so what or I want to build metrics. So the features could be, okay, we want to enable instrumentation where uh, we will measure the email open rate or we'll measure the click through rate. Um, let's go to the next one, which is uh, supporting with data. So when you write a doc, uh, you really think big, you write for a three year vision um, and you clearly outline the MLP and then when you decide these features or decide anything in your doc, you have to support it with the data or customer anecdotes. You can get it from the previous purchase history of customers or uh, if your website has some feedback feature, um, you can get the data from that. If you don't really have anything, you can go and do some customer survey, focus groups. Uh, there are a lot of interesting books that talk about it. Uh, and then the last step is we really go down the route of uh, deep dive and align on the tech design uh, and the feasibility. So some people might think, oh, why it's really required. I mean, as a PM, I come in, I understand customer, I 
get my pain points right and we get a buy-in on the dog, aren't we done? So no, I mean, there's a, that's what is the difference uh, between if you think about like a consultant versus a product manager. Um, I'm now done consulting in the big four and I realized the big difference when I moved from there to product manager is in consulting in many of the consulting assignments, you really don't have to, you build probably a pilot version of it or sometimes you just go in, do some analysis, do recommendations and it's valuable recommendations and analysis, but you leave it at that. You are probably not there to see the implementation happening. I mean, your recommendations could be implemented, may not be implemented, don't know. But um, when you talk about the product manager, you're really involved in the end step. Um, a success is not defined by just having things on the dock. It has to be defined based upon like launching it. So you really need to deep dive in each of those themes, modules, uh, and then work with your tech team uh, to understand what is the feasibility of that. So let's see how it plays with our example. So um, as we discussed, we want to write with a three-year vision and then clearly outline the MLP and think about it. This is your opportunity to think big. This is your opportunity to um, go for the big shots and um, write for your product. So in this example, for example, the customer engagement platform, uh, as you know, the tech industry, we are moving towards uh, getting better at recommendations. We have ML algorithms. Um, we can introduce AI uh, concepts in our, how we engage with the customers. So this is what you want to mention in the doc as well. So um, it's not that you might not get there in the first uh, two months or six months, but you want to mention it to show your ability to think. Um, the next piece is about decide to build two or three features for each of the themes. So this is what is really required to take your product from the paper onto really the features that other teams take will understand and then build it. Um, and when you pick these features, you really want to pick the ones which are going to address the pain points. Uh, in the next slide, we're really going to talk about this uh, prioritization piece. Then last one is about being proactive, working with tech, legal, uh, trust me, it's someone has said it and I agree with it 100%. Uh, product manager wears multiple hats and uh, in any product, you want to have this alignment uh, before the meeting with various stakeholders. Uh, so the tip is, I would put it this way. So meeting before meetings. Um, <laughs> so try to pick, think about it this way. Uh, people are busy, so there are some tricks as a product manager you can do. I have done some, they work wonderfully well. So try to pick brains of your SD over say a beer instead of trying to do formal meetings. Uh, if people are busy, really they probably tired at the end of the day and don't want to spend another half an hour formal meeting. So just bounce off your ideas with the tech team or legal uh, and that's where these coffee chats or beer, these are the things will help you and you can pick any forum, I try to pick informal forum that might help. Um, and there, that's where you can do this initial uh, brainstorming, bouncing the ideas, uh, trying to get some feasibility um, in your initial stages uh, when you write this uh, product document or the presentation. And once you get closer to it, then you would want to do some formal meetings. Um, and when you think that, okay, I might almost all stakeholders are aligned, then you want to have that bigger meeting with the leadership where you present a proposal um, and then you want to know if the people are going to back up your proposal. And that is the way you can get it uh, out uh, smoothly and successfully. And there, there can be debates and discussions. Uh, the purpose is really the reasons or the pain points uh, that you think are important. Um, and for those you are building the products, uh, you want to do your homework and align with uh, as many stakeholders as possible that, yes, these are the pain points that we should really solve. Let's go to the next step. So the prioritization and trade-offs, yes, this is very interesting step. So how do we prioritize? So as a PM, I, I usually prioritize uh, based upon uh, within the theme and not across the theme. So, and we'll get to this uh, in the next slide where you will see really an end-to-end -end example. Uh, you want to really secure the resources for each of the themes. So in the step one, we discuss about, you want to have all these five themes that we discussed for this particular product and they're important. Uh, so it means you want to have resources for each of the themes. Um, 
you may not need to have different resources. You can have same resources, but you need to have plan uh, when they would be finishing up the stories for each of the themes so that in the end your product is ready. Uh, under this is really identify the long pole and dependencies. Uh, this way you can work with your SDM or tech team and building their sprint plan accordingly. The one thing I would always do is uh, while deciding whether we should build a feature now or later, uh, think about the incremental value that a particular feature is going to drive. It's not about, hey, it, the feature is very nice. So for customer engagement platform, if our uh, algorithms are really good, the recommendations are really good, people are going to click on it, they're going to shop more. Uh, that, that's not a way I would make a decision. What I would do is, uh, based upon the customer segment that I analyze, uh, what is their pain point? And am I solving that pain point? If I solve, think about it, if I solve uh, some issue uh, for which customer feel um, it's a huge pain point for them, uh, the incremental value of solving that will be very higher compared to um, customers are okay with your current set of um, email campaigns and then you try to build uh, some super uh, cool features around recommendations uh, but that might not add that much incremental value to the customer because the customer was already kind of happy with what they had. So think about always giving customer the incremental value uh, through any feature. Uh, the next piece is about really making trade-offs. So get the product out of the door is the key for a product manager eventually. So you need to learn to make trade-offs. And let's talk about through the example, um, how I learned some of these things. So, this is the only slide which is dense, uh, I assure you. So let's go through the themes. So we talk about the first one, which is customer segmentation. So for any customer engagement platform, we want to have ability to uh, filter, slice and dice the customers. Um, for example, you are a um, marketing manager for uh, soft lines business, uh, want to run maybe one set of campaigns and then the other wants to run um, uh, the other set of campaigns, like the music, if you have the music related uh, items you're selling, you might want to run another set of campaigns. You want the ability to segment the customers. It could be based upon their uh, purchase history. It could be their country uh, or the browsing history. And so think about in this case, if customers say, um, or also the marketing managers say that, I don't have ability to really uh, do the segmentation of customers in a detail level. Um, for example, I want to go to the third level of browse node, uh, and that will help me to really uh, identify the customers. And then that is what you want to do. So in this case, uh, the way kind of we can do a trade-off is um, I would pick probably just top three or five um, segmentation attributes instead of trying to solve the problem for my entire uh, company or all the marketing managers in the first place. Uh, let's go through the next one, which is about uh, the content building. So um, th this is an interesting example. So think about it this way. Uh, we, we live in the global world. Our customers buy on the sites or they buy services. Um, they have different language preferences. So you might hear about some feedback like, no, we want to get our offers in our local languages. And uh, the way in this case, so it's an example. So if I would want to approach this problem, whether I should do it in my MLP or not, then I will try to understand, uh, let's look at all the customers who will benefit from this engagement platform and uh, try to understand what is their default language. Um, if the language of preference they mention is English for 90% of the customers, then I won't try to solve this in the MLP phase. I will try to solve it in the letter phase. Uh, similarly, the other piece is about uh, when you think about how the content is generated, if you want to send some marketing offers, emails to customers, uh, they're generally using some templates. Um, and so sometimes it takes time to build this type of templates. And so the marketing team might ask you, we need the ability to generate dynamic templates where the content we can just insert and the other pieces of uh, email or the push notification can remain constant. So some pieces change dynamically. Um, but if I think about it and if I talk to tech team and they mention, no, it's a effort of like two months, three months, then I will try to maybe find some balance in between. I would say, okay, can we have some six, seven predefined templates uh, and can they fulfill maybe 70, 80% of the use cases? 
And if they do that, then you probably don't need to go and build every feature for dynamic template. Uh, you can just settle on some predefined set of templates. Um, the next one is uh, probably a little easier to understand, uh, the targeting piece. So when you build any um, engagement platform and then you're trying to reach out to customers with your offers, um, it could be promotional offers on some emails. Uh, it could be because they browse some items, they might be interested uh, in those items. Uh, some customers might complain they get too many emails and uh, some customer in some countries, they're probably okay to get more than one or two or three emails per day. So how, how would you solve this problem? Now, if you think about it, you can really go ahead and try to build a, a configuration system where, um, or maybe a config file where based upon some uh, country, region, or um, based upon uh, the customer's uh, frequency and recency to your website, uh, you can configure how many emails to be sent uh, to that customer per day. Um, or uh, if you think that's not going to add a lot of incremental value to customers, um, I would just do one thing. It's my MLP. I want to test it out. So I'll just put a number, one email per customer per day, and I would just get over with it. And eventually, once we build the product, we have launched it, we got some metrics from customers, we understand their behavior, feedback, then we can really start optimizing this piece. So this is how you can consider making a trade-off. All right, uh, in the metrics one, I would just cover the last one, try to tell the feature that I will not build uh, in an MLP. So for example, the revenue attribution. So while I understand when you want to build a engagement platform with certain set of customers, um, you would probably want to understand by sending the emails, are you driving some incremental revenue for company? Um, and then you can build really some sophisticated uh, attribution models, uh, take help of your data scientists and do it. Or uh, you can build a simple model and then push everything for the phase two. So the goal is really get through the MLP phase because this is a phase where you really don't know whether the product is going to play out well in the market or not. And so you really want to start making those trade-offs and ensure uh, your tech budget is um, in alignment and you're able to ship the product out in a specified amount of time. The tip on this one is um, once you think about your prioritization, you agree on your MLP, then stick to the plan. And this is the thing which can happen most frequently. You agreed on your MLP and then your maybe boss or someone comes and says, hey, why not we build this feature? It's pretty cool. I saw it in some competitor's platform. And how much of a compelling uh, reason they would have, uh, unless it's really going to make or break your MLP, uh, don't try to prioritize it. So stick to the plan. Uh, otherwise you can easily get into the option of uh, where you just skip, uh, take the MLP plan and you scope creep. So that can very easily happen. So try to stick with the plan and try to ship your product. All right, the step four, uh, only two steps are left, step four and five. So here we are really going to talk about how will you launch the product. You can either go with the approach of I want to launch it across various countries that my customers live in or I want to go with uh, a local launch. And then there could be a concept of whether we are making some decisions as one way or two way door. Uh, you might have heard about it one, um, let's try to understand it with the example. Um, so the other point is we want to understand uh, that we have resources to support the launch. Uh, think about it this way. You are building the product is a different step than actually launching the product. So in launch, you might need more resources. You will need probably resources more on the tech side or supporting the tickets. Um, if your product is internal, you will need more resources uh, in the field uh, that will help you uh, or that will help uh, the users to solve the problems. The third piece is really the product buzz where you really want to create, um, let me put it this way. This is what I heard from one of my uh, previous managers. Um, as a product manager, if you are not excited about this product, no one else will. And so <laughs> this is your job to create a product buzz, create promotional videos, uh, take help of someone to do that. Um, and really send them across uh, to 
either your stakeholders or or maybe if it's consumer facing product then try to surface it uh, on your site um, as early as possible and create that excitement and then the last tip is really the dial up plan rollback plan so everyone knows most of you would know probably about a b testing uh, how would you dial up a product to x percent of the traffic uh, along with that it's important to have a rollback plan so things always don't go the right way they can go south and if they go south you need to know how will you roll back the feature or the entire product um, the last piece is about war rooms where you really want to um, one week before and after the launch uh, you want to set up uh, the war rooms where your resources around tech or other teams and you work with them uh, to address any problems issues that come in in our example uh, the customer engagement platform so think about it that you want to for example deprecate the old system and if you want to move to a new system um, the challenge i've seen in one of my experiences is when you want to really do the flip between the two systems uh, metrics is a big issue um, you might want to maintain if you have to maintain two systems uh, that means you want to maintain metrics for both of them it means uh, managing the metrics for both in the same wbr mbr qbr is a uh, chaos uh, it takes a lot of um, effort to bridge the numbers um, or the other way is uh, you just call it a one-way door and then you say at this particular point of time we are going to flip the system uh, and then whatever that comes through if there are any issues uh, we align on the eta and we'll fix the issues so that's kind of the concept about one way versus uh, two-way door uh, in this case in one-way door we will probably not go back and roll back uh, the product uh, we will just go in and if you face any issues, we will go and fix the issues instead of trying to roll back. The other piece is uh, securing the resources. So think about for our uh, customer engagement platform, we are going to probably secure a marketing person, a couple of program managers who can help us uh, with the either marketing, uh, either emailing part, um, they are going to help us with the actual uh, execution. Uh, we probably need more support engineers who can help us with the tickets. And th these things could vary with your product. What I really want you to understand is um, understand the concept uh, with an example. And I really am hopeful you will take these lessons with you uh, and implement it in your product. Uh, and it could be in different flavor, but really implementing the framework is what we want to learn here. The next piece is about, yeah, we talk about it, building promotional videos uh, for your product. Um, and then the last is, yes, aligning on the expectations, how you would fix the issues. The tip here is, uh, I learned it hard way. So drop off everything a week before and after the launch, get the launch right. Um, there is nothing more important than right launch of the product that you've worked so hard in past one, two, four, six months um, and launch it smoothly. The next lesson is about uh, measuring the impact. So. This is the crucial step. Um, you want to start monitoring various metrics for your product um, from the moment it is launched. And then you want to take this data driven approach that will help you with the future roadmap. You also want to do uh, weekly, monthly uh, reviews. And as a PM, you should own those reviews. Uh, you need to help, you need to identify the key metrics. You want to understand uh, how you want to, which, and metrics you want to move and how you want to move them to north and right. Um, in our example, if we take the example of this uh, customer engagement platform, uh, we talk about, yes, we would probably monitor how many emails are sent out, uh, what is the opt-out rate of customers, um, are they going to opt out at a, a program level or a like a campaign level, or are they going to opt out for entire year, any email coming from your organization or the company? The later one is obviously not preferred the click-through rate uh, you want to monitor uh, whether you are sending them the good content uh, and here what you really want is you want to put probably some guardrails in place where if your for example opt-out rate goes beyond x percent uh, then you would probably just uh, turn off that particular campaign and you want to have that ability uh, to use the metrics effectively and make the decisions uh, that will help uh, your mlp to have a, a soft landing the next piece is, uh, for example, if you talk about opt-out rate is very high, um, you want to have these plans ready before the actual launch, uh, where if one of my metrics goes 
up or down or on toss, what I would do. So what is my fallback plan? Uh, in this case, you probably want to improve your relevancy scores. You want to adjust your thresholds in your algorithm. So here I'm talking about uh, if you're sending some recommended content to your customers through customer engagement platform, then and the more customers are opting out uh, for a particular campaign, then you really want to understand and try to resolve uh, that issue by improving the relevancy. The next piece is about setting the monthly goals. Uh, so. This is how this is very important in case of a new product where uh, you probably don't have a benchmark. Um, you might have a benchmark of similar product, uh, but the way I would do it is um, I will try to understand what is our company's goal or what is our organization's goal. Um, for if you want to have a goal where we want to reach out to um, our 90% of customers uh, through various engagements uh, by a, in next 12 months. Uh, then I would sign up for a goal saying, okay, we at the end of first month, we are at say 40%. So we'll increase it every month by five to 10% until we hit that goal. So set these goals and then these goals will help you to pick uh, the right feature. So these goals along with the uh, feedback from customers or the metrics that you got will help you to pick the next set of features for your um, expanding the product for beyond MLP. The tip here is, yeah, you launch the product. And so you send the announcement name, email. Now it's time to celebrate with your team. And this is very important step. Often uh, at the end of it, you might feel we just did a lot of work. Amazing. We launched it. Let's just take a break. Uh, but I would really tell you it matters to celebrate it with your team. Because think about it, that is the team you're going to work next time uh, to launch your next set of products as a product manager. And yes, product manager has to think about these things, uh, not only about the product. You need to think about the team and uh, how you're going to really celebrate the success. All right, so we just finished uh, the five steps. So in summary, let's understand what we learned about. So we learned about how do we take a product from zero to one. Um, we understood a little bit difference between a product which is zero to one versus one to hundred. We understood with an example, uh, we took the example of customer engagement platform. Uh, we talked about uh, product ideation where you want to understand how to um, identify your customers, different set of customers. You want to also know about your stakeholders. You really want to know your customer's pain point um, and then you want to map their pain points um, to specific themes. So you really need to define the themes of your product, which are nothing but pillars without which your product can't stand on its own. Um, and I understand if this pain point concept or these pillars, themes, it's a little bit new for you. Um, maybe it needs a separate uh, video because these are the things that would come through some experience or reading through books. Uh, but what I really wanted to go through is the entire framework of taking a product from zero to one. The next piece we learned about is uh, buying from the stakeholders. We talked about why it's important to write a bigger vision, three-year vision, and then within that you want to really define what is your MLP, the minimum lovable product. The next piece we talked about is prioritization and trade-off, um, whether you want to implement some feature or not implement some feature. Again, important thing is don't prioritize across the themes, and that's why you came up with the themes in the first place. Uh, you want to also think about having the incremental value uh, for every feature that you build. The last piece is about, uh, the second last piece is about the launching the product where you want to decide whether you want to do global launch, local launch. Um, are there some decisions of your product which are one way, two way? This is what you need to think about. Uh, you need to have dial up and both rollback plans. So the last piece is, yes, the measuring the impact we talked about uh, what are the right set of metrics that we should consider? Um, you really need to do that instrumentation work with the tech team and build those out before you launch it. Uh, and then these metrics will really act as a feedback loop and feed into your uh, next set of features. So with this kind of framework, I worked and built uh, two, three products. I, we really got good feedback. And I wanted to tell one thing, the reason the products people love the products um, is not because we build some coolest feature. We try to solve the most complex problems. No, uh, the reason we got the 
good feedback for the product. People loved it because we built the features which provided the customers with the highest incremental value. And that is really the key of building any product and MLP. So with this, I would wish you good luck and hopefully this will help you. Thank you very much.